All right, everybody, it's time for your weekly Bitcoin update. We're starting right now. All right, thanks so much for joining me here today. Just a reminder, guys, if this is your first time to the channel, make sure to go ahead and hit that subscribe button and click the notify bell so you can be notified when we go live to answer your questions. All right, with that out of the way, thank you so much for joining me. Today is April the 6th, 2018. We're going to be taking a look at the Bitcoin market today and figure out what's going on. I know there's still a lot of fear and anxiety out there in the crypto markets today. I know that there is a lot of uncertainty about where the price is going. So we're going to take a look. We always go to the charts to get our head straight because we do rely on technical analysis here at Cracking Crypto. So with that said, let's just go ahead and head right on over to the charts to see what's going on. All right. So I want to start out today with somewhat of a larger picture today. So we're looking here at the weekly chart of Bitcoin. And uh, I'm playing around, if you guys will notice here from my previous videos, I am uh, working on a more advanced version of our TD indicator that we're slowly and slowly creeping toward perfection and having everything that we absolutely want in here. One of the newer additions is the aggressive 13 as seen by here, as well as the addition of our support or our stop loss lines that are plotted immediately. Um, and I can get into that later, but that's not really what I want to get into for the purpose of this video. Um, but I just want to take a look at this and kind of look at this with fresh eyes, because this is uh, something that I've been thinking about for a while. If you look here, if you look at this uh, lower green line, the lower TDST support, and this green line right here that is slightly more transparent, that is the high of the TDST line. And what this represents is the trading range from this nine count um, cell setup. Uh, and this really is the gap. This is really the breadth of that huge uh, 2017, end of 2017, and the first week of 2018 massive, massive run up. Um, and this was this is the massive move. This is a this is a tripling of price from about four thousand to about twelve thousand. And this represents a valid range right here. And looking at this, you can kind of just take everything above this line. Now I know that you may disagree with this, but I just want you to look at the market in this way for a second, um, at, through through the light of this strategy. All this up here, this massive huge run up from 12,000 to almost 20,000 and then back down could be almost considered noise. This was the irrational exuberance that culminated at the end of the year for a large multitude of reasons. I think that the finger that most people mostly point to is this idea that institutional money was going to get involved and the misunderstanding of people who are not familiar with uh, institutional investment or investment banking or how markets are created and made mainstream and public or really how mass adoption works from a from a market analytics standpoint, people thought that, oh, Wall Street's just going to get on the Coinbase and start buying up, you know, lots of Bitcoin. They're going to get on GDAX or Gemini Exchange. And I'm sorry to tell you guys, but that's just not how it's going to happen. Um, if you check out the other videos that we've got coming out this week, I'm going to be going over a lot of the news over a lot of the big macro moves that I'm really paying attention to. The acquisitions of mining farms, the acquisitions of trading exchanges. Um, these are the big moves that uh, Wall Street will make. These are the big moves that institutional money will make, mostly OTC. They're not going on to exchanges and purchasing their stake in Bitcoin. The way that markets are created is you're going to have these big institutions. They're going to come in. They're going to buy their Bitcoin if they want to have direct exposure to the asset in question. They're going to buy it OTC. They're going to buy it and that's not that's over the counter, which means it's a private exchange. It's a P2P exchange, meaning they're not going on to an exchange. So this is a massive transfer of value that does not move the needle on the price because they're not going on to an exchange. You have to remember the only thing that actually makes the price of an of any asset or equity or commodity move is buying and selling the individual actions of individuals. If you're not getting onto a publicly traded exchange and buying or selling, then the price isn't going to move. There could be the greatest news in Bitcoin history 
ever that could come out tomorrow. It could be, you know, um, China has officially announced that Bitcoin is legal tender and their national currency. But if for some reason, every single Bitcoin trader or holder decided that day not to get onto any exchange or to buy or sell any Bitcoin, then the price would not move. It would be a dead market. Not It wouldn't go up. It wouldn't go down. The only thing, and I'm sorry to hammer this in, but it's so fundamental to understand because people seem to lose sight of this when they're talking about social movements or, or movements in the world at large or an interest or news stories and actual price action. The only thing that makes that needle move when you're looking at the price chart is buying and selling on publicly traded exchanges. This means that when you go through local Bitcoins and you purchase your Bitcoins, that is purchasing Bitcoin OTC from a private market. When you do that, you're not making the price change whatsoever. So when these large institutions want direct exposure to this asset, Bitcoin, they're not going on to publicly traded exchanges and purchasing. They're purchasing their Bitcoins OTC. And the way that this market's going to be created when it's, as institutional money moves in, and they are moving in, believe you me. Again, we're going to get into some of the news later on this week and start focusing on some of that, the macro stuff that's going on. But you need to understand that this is happening. This is happening all around us. Meanwhile, we're all, many, many people are just stuck sitting here looking at a price chart. And that's fine, especially if you're a trader, and that's what we're focusing on here. But there is bigger picture stuff here for the adoption of Bitcoin as a currency, for the promotion of Bitcoin as an asset class, for the involvement of institutional money as it's colloquially referred to by the Bitcoin community. Um, there's big plays happening in the OTC markets. So, um, so getting back to my point, that's, that's how these markets are going to be created. You're going to have the big money come in. They're going to buy their Bitcoin, um, OTC, which does not move the price. So this idea that inst when institutional money comes in, it, the price is just going to go just exponentially up. That's true on a longer time frame. In the short term, that's not how it works because they're gonna come in, they're gonna buy their Bitcoin OTC, then they're gonna purchase the, the companies associated with trading and investment and custodianship, such as wallets, exchanges, etc. You start to see this with the circle acquisition of Poloniex, with Monex's acquisition of CoinCheck, you're gonna start seeing much, much more of this as we move forward because these financial institutions don't just want direct exposure to Bitcoin. Some of them don't want direct exposure to Bitcoin, but they want the fees generated from trading. They want any kind of fees associated with any kind of in investment in, in this asset or the exchange of this asset or anything involved with in this asset. They just want anything that they can get their hands on to purchase to have a, um, a passive form of income. And after they acquire a suitable amount of companies, then they will begin marketing it to your average dro, to your retail investor, to your mom and pops. And those people are going to get onto these newly acquired exchanges and begin buying and selling because there is this massive marketing campaign that's going to happen. And that's when the price is going to go up. Now, the time frame on this, I'm not sure. I would, I would like to think that it would be within two years. In fact, I'm fairly confident that it will be. In fact, it might even be before the end of this year. But that is what you have to keep in your head as we move forward into this market. Institutional money is coming in. The greatest thing that you could have ever done with Bitcoin as an asset class is buy and hold. Regardless of at any point in Bitcoin's history, wherever you bought, if you would have just held, you would have eventually been rewarded for your long-term thinking. And I'd like to pound that point that your patience will be rewarded for holding Bitcoin if you just want to invest in this as a viable asset class because it is a viable investment because it is such an early market that even at this price, which most people think is ridiculous, is nothing compared to the heights that Bitcoin is capable of achieving, especially if it can come even close to its stated goal of becoming a world reserve currency or a universal store of value. So keep those macro things in mind as we're moving forward. This is how markets are created behind the scenes and the average retail investor is not aware of this until it happens. And you don't want to get caught with your pants around your ankles. You don't want to get caught waiting for the price spike. There is a perfectly valid way to trade these markets, even in current conditions. And we are actively doing that. 
but there is also a long-term investment play to keep in mind as you move forward into this. And for many people, that's very painful with something as volatile as Bitcoin when it loses all of its uh, a large significant portion of its value within three months. So keep those macro elements in mind. Let's take a look at this chart. And I just wanna go over this point here where I'm talking about this valid range right here is, is this trading range. Um, and then we see that we went, this is a weekly chart, we see that we went to another cell setup right here. Um, and we did get the first number, this would have been our number one of our cell countdown, and this would have been number two, and this would have been number three. Um, however, we did not complete that cell countdown. We're still actively on a cell countdown because we have still not had a nine count to the downside. Um, because of this bullish price slip right here, we would be experiencing it right now except for this one-off candle. Um, four. Yeah, that's quite significant there. Sometimes you can look at this and see if this shouldn't have been a one-off candle, if you can still count it as part of a valid trend. But this, uh, this right here was a clear breaking of this trend from where we reversed at 6K and came all the way back to 12K. Clearly a big move. So um, my idea here is that this is your valid trading range and this was a rational exuberance. That all of this was people, uh, I mean, I have evidence of this, not in my personal life, but in the lives of others that I have directly seen. You had, during, during this point, when Bitcoin was blowing up past 10K, you had people going out and charging their credit cards. You had people going out and taking second mortgages out on their homes to purchase Bitcoin because they thought this is this is it. This is the moment. This is when we're going to 100,000. And it just wasn't the case. And those people were very, very lucky if they happened to get out of 20K. But I just know the reality that most didn't. You know, most are suffering this bear market. And those are the chops that you have to suffer from an investment viewpoint with the Bitcoin market historically. So all we have to go off is the historicity of this asset class. And that is the reality that the individuals, many of whom bought at the top, the, the new waves of Bitcoin holders would come in during periods of mass hype and big price spike. And they would purchase at or near the top, and then the price would collapse quite significantly. And then there would be an extended bear market. And those who would suffer through that bear market would see that initial investment pay off very handsomely. And those that would sell at the bottom obviously get, as we refer to, wrecked. So um, so I'd like to keep in mind this trading range. And in view of that, you know, this actually doesn't look that bad. You know, we've come up to the top of the trading range and now we're coming back down. We're a little bit more than halfway right now below the trading range. And we've got this uh, this doji on the weekly. This doesn't mean anything yet. There's still a few more days left in the week, but it's getting close to the end. Um, so this could signal a move either way because this is an indecision candle. We are, if I zoom in here a little bit, on a buy setup. Um, so we're on a four of nine. And your short could have been entered in right, well, your short could have been entered really on the weekly chart here. Uh, as soon as this three traded below the two, um, although many aggress, uh, most people would have been short still from here at 13,000 once the red two traded below the red one. And then you've never really had cause um, to, to sell. I mean, obviously a lot could have played here but you were still experiencing this this setup at this point so if you're still short from thirteen thousand, you're still in a very very good position so uh, but obviously most people aren't uh, positionally trading the weekly chart uh, unfortunately uh, that's sometimes a great thing to do when it comes to bitcoin if you have a longer time frame are patient and uh, you know again long-term thinking is what's most successful in life so I guess from a practical viewpoint, what this is most helpful for is realizing that, you know, the area of support that we see here is 4,000, 4,104. If we decide to go lower, I mean, just looking here, there's no support here, guys. There is support here. There is support here from this bull flag right here. And, you know, if we go down, this is the area potentially to go to. All right. Jumping down to the daily, again, not looking super amazing.
for Bitcoin, we did get the aggressive 13, which led to this pop. And we do have the clop right here indicator on uh, on a red four. Uh, we are now, however, on the daily working on our countdown. So we're at an eight of 13. So we'll just have to see kind of how this plays out. You have to take this into account with that doji area. Um, obviously, we're experiencing this as some people are referring to this double bottom as we're seeing. So this is a dangerous area. You know, if we go down, it's to the 4000 area, potentially. Um, if we go up, I mean, obviously, we see that sky is the limit up here, but we really need to see a very strong move and the volume really isn't there. You know, we did not see, and, and this is something that I talked about in my last video, we saw not the volume that we saw here, this amazing, massive spike of volume to buy this dip, and we're not seeing that here. Now, it could come in, it could happen, but I think that there's so much stuff happening in the macro scene that it's not going to happen right now. So let's take a look at my drawing tools. All right. So one area that I want to point out is well obviously as you can see I've drawn this this right angle triangle uh, from right here from the top uh, at 20,000 down to the low the next high and then this most recent swing low that we experienced and if this triangle is valid then we have a very very tight range left to trade in before either the breakdown or the breakout um, we also broke down past the median line um, of this pitchfork that I've drawn in this trading channel based on the same metrics, the swing high and the swing low. And you can see that this pitchfork has been extremely helpful after coming down and testing and where we could finally draw our pitchfork. Um, we came up and broke through the median line. Well, we tested the median line here, flirted around with this for a little bit before attempting to make a break to the upside. That didn't happen. Once we came down and traded back through the median line, that was your exit signal. Uh, came down here attempting to test this quartile, came back up to flirt with the median line, and now we're coming back down. So we're bouncing around now in this range in between, which if I actually were to throw another quadrant in here, would correspond quite perfectly to that. Um, I'm not going to go through the rigmarole of doing that at this moment because I don't want to click the wrong button and be embarrassed while I'm doing this. So let's just keep it simple, stupid, and... Uh, I want to point out also this critical juncture right here uh, that I've labeled. And this is the intersection of the right angle triangle breakout um, optimum point, uh, the median line, and the Fibonacci line right here, this, uh, this pink line. So this is a confluence area right here of very, very many significant support levels and or resistance levels. So I plotted out in a chart that I posted yesterday the potential that... I, I had drawn the potential to come uh, to come up to test the median line down and bounce around here before breaking out or the potential is also just to go to this critical juncture and get rejected from it which I would not like to see that would be very depressing for Bitcoin that would probably mean in my eyes the the slow move down to that 4,000 area. However, I think something very interesting is gonna happen if we go lower than 5,000, because then you're gonna see a lot of game theory about mining, because the average cost, especially in America, to mine a cryptocurrency, to mine Bitcoin, is about that, about $5,000. There are some areas that are cheaper. Obviously, in Venezuela, you can mine a Bitcoin for less than $1,000. And I think there's some, there's some um, miss, uh, some mal knowledge, if I would, about the game theory surrounding Bitcoin mining. Um, obviously, you know, the basic idea is the more profit there is in mining Bitcoin, the more competition and the more decentralized. The less profit, the less competition and the more centralized it will become. I think that if we see Bitcoin go below a sustainable profit margin, you're going to see a lot of centralization of mining in areas that are, um, shall we say, typically from a first world country standpoint considered you know not kindness like you know these would be areas like venezuela um, other areas come to mind uh, areas that heavily subsidize their electricity or have a, a very high source of renewable energy so i know that canada is competing um, very strongly to become a um, a center for mining um Obviously, you have completely subsidized mining going on on a massive scale in China and other Asian countries. I think that 
a lot of that though will go away or switch or move depending on the profitability of Bitcoin mining. You're gonna see it move to areas that are extremely cheap and those areas that are extremely cheap, this could change the short term uh, of Bitcoin because you really need that mining to be decentralized for us to have a strong attack proof surface. So um, again, you're gonna see thousands of articles come out about game theory surrounding Bitcoin mining if the price goes below 5,000 area. But I don't, unlike others, I don't think that's the death nail for Bitcoin. I think all that signals is that the game will change in the short term. Okay. So, uh, so breaking the triangle, uh, going down here to flirt with this median line. Obviously, we do have some more uh, near-term support you know, such as, you know, 4,800, the next Fibonacci line, right? Um, I guess, you know, if we did a very low, slow grind down, I guess the intersection of this Fibonacci line and the median line would be about 4,700. I don't see price really yo-yoing like that though, but it is possible. Um, we'll just have to kind of wait and see on how this goes, but I'm watching this very closely. This juncture, this juncture right here, kind of our floor, and trend line for this triangle. And so I'm looking for a close. Now zooming in, we can also see, as I said, that we're on a four of nine on the buy setup. Uh, we've got this clop, which should indicate um, short-term movement upwards, which we did get off this candle. We are up, you know, closing, uh, looking to potentially close above even its high. Uh, we did have the aggressive 13 back here, but that only led to this very, very small, very weak volume rally. So still not a whole lot. You could have entered along on this aggressive 13 um, with your stop loss here. Um, you also could have entered your long off this buy setup, off the nine, with your stop loss here. And this stop loss is the true range of the lowest candle minus its low. So this entire length of this, which is the lowest candle in the buy setup, minus uh, subtracted from the lowest point is this level right here. So you know you could have entered aggressively upon the close of this candle and the open of this one about 68.32 and with a stop loss of about 57.96. So going to the 12 hour chart. Going to the 12 hour chart also gives us basically the same picture. We had a non-perfected nine, nine by setup uh, with the aggressive 13 on the daily, which led to this very short-term rally. And now we're back down with a doji candle off this short move down. But now we do have a green one. So looking for a green two to trade above that. So, you know, but all of this is, is weak sauce, man. This is all like milk toast stuff. There's not a lot of strong, decisive movements that we would expect to see at these pivotal moments. And that's just because there's so much uncertainty. There's so much acquisition going on by large, large scale money and investment banks. There's, um, you know, game theory flying around as I was just talking about about Bitcoin mining. There's the SEC regulation. There's just so much that's on the side and we are going to need to see regulation get clarified and we're going to need to see these consolidations of institutional money purchasing stake in the cryptocurrency fee, uh, markets and not necessarily what I mean by that as I said earlier is not necessarily direct exposure to Bitcoin it might and probably is the acquisition of companies that can profit from the buying and selling of Bitcoin or the use of Bitcoin in one way or the other so that's what we'll be looking to see um, all right, guys, that's all I got. I would love to hear your comments uh, down in the section below. Again, if you are new to the channel, make sure to hit that subscribe button. We appreciate it. If you are a returning viewer, make sure to give us those thumbs up. And with that said, I'm going to say peace out, guys. Have a wonderful evening.